In this lesson, I want to show you how to use the terminal and some commands in the Unix command line. Now you may be wondering why with a server as simple to set up and use as Mac OS X server, we ever need to go into the command line. Well, server app is pretty good, but there will probably come a time when server app by itself just does not do everything that you want it to do. So I'm going to start off by opening up the terminal, and I'm going to use this terminal in order to demonstrate a few commands. You'll find terminal in the other group in Launchpad. And at first, it may not be sized appropriately. So we can make this a little larger by using a key command, Shift, Command, and the plus sign, which is above the equal key and it will dynamically resize our font larger. And if you click on the upper right hand side here, it will make the terminal window into a full screen. Now I am in what is called a shell and the type of shell we are using is called the bash shell. And I want to just demonstrate a few commands that are useful to finding out information about your particular environment. So we could always type something like hostname press return, and it will give you back the name of your computer. We could also do something like who am I, all one word with no spaces, and press return. And that will tell me that I'm the admin user. It gives you back the short name or the account name for the currently logged in account. There's a more complex version of that who am I command. You could use it, it's called ID. And this is getting a little bit further beyond this lesson. But now you can see things like the Unix user ID associated with the admin name right here at the very first part of the results of that command. We can see things like the group ID or the primary group ID and the groups that my admin user is a member of. Now you may not understand that information at this point. That's okay. Just understand that there are many, many commands that you can get that give you back valuable information that's good for troubleshooting or just understanding how your computer system is working. Now most of these commands that I'm showing you will work equally well on just a normal Mac OS X client as well as on a server. Here's another one, sw underscore vers for software versions. If you press return, it will tell you what product you're currently running, which is Mac OS X version 10.8. It doesn't tell us that it's a server, we can also do things like the ls command for listing out files. And by itself, it is not that useful. We can see here my home folder and also a tar file that I've got from somewhere else. Let's list that out with a long listing and that's ls space dash l. The first part's the command. Any space in there is a separator value and then the dash L are the options. And the dash L says, give me a long listing of this home folder. Notice that despite the fact that we typically don't see the library, we are seeing the library folder in the home folder here. And notice that it is the only one that has this little special at symbol. And I'm going to do another parameter on the ls command at this point, and that's the capital O. And we can see that normally the reason that we don't see the library in the finder is that it's set to be hidden. And this is what's called a file flag. What we have here in this long listing is in the first part, the very first letter in the very first column that tells us if it's a directory or a file. Then we have a set of permissions. Then we have some size and linking information, some ownership information. The O adds in the flag information. Here we have size, time and date stamp, and then the name. So not to get into too many details on the ls command, but it can get quite complex. We have many, many options. There are things like the ls-1, which will simply list out the names without all that extra stuff. We can add some colorization to it. And since my screen's getting a little bit crowded, I'm gonna use this clear command, C-L-E-A-R. Press return, and it clears everything. Now I'm going to do an ls-l, but I'm going to use a capital G, and that colorizes some of the output. Notice the folder names are this purplish color, and the file names are still just black on white. 
We have many, many more options that we can use with the ls command. I will just give you one big long command to see some of the more complex things. We can do the ls-l, we can use the g, we can put in the capital O, we can put in a lowercase e, an at sign, and I'm not explaining all these, but I just want to show you how complex the output can look from this command. If you want to know more about any one command, there is a special command called man, and you type man and a space, and then the name of the command that you want to get information about, and this will give you what's called a manual page. And here we can see that the ls command has nearly the entire alphabet used for parameters. Both upper and lower case parameters are available. And that's important to understand about the Unix command line, that upper and lower case are significant. So a Q will quit out of that man page and get us back into just our normal bash session. Clear will clear the screen again so that we can better see what's going on. Now the file system that we are using in Mac OS X is sort of created as a inverted hierarchical tree. So at the top level we call this the root and below that we have branches or subfolders or subdirectories spreading out from the root. One of the ways to visualize this is to simply get a path for where we currently are in the file system, PWD. And we can see that we are in user's admin. Now the slashes indicate separation, except for the first slash, which indicates the root of the file system. So we're at the root of the file system, then we're inside a folder called users, then we're inside a folder called admin. We can change our directory by using a command called cd. And we can change it, relatively speaking, to where we are by just typing the name of a subfolder. Now we're in my home folder, so I should be able to just type in desktop and go into that desktop folder. Of course, it does help if you spell things right. If you make a mistake, you can up arrow once to bring back the previous command and type it out properly the next time. Now if I do a PWD, we'll see that I'm in users, admin, desktop, and that is different than where I was before. So CD is for changing directory, PWD is for your present working directory. If you forget where you are, you can always use that to tell you where you are. Some other relative commands, you can use something like CD point point, and that says go back up one level in the hierarchy. So now if I do a PWD, you'll see I'm back to users admin. There's some absolutes like CD slash will take us to the top level of the hard drive. And if we do an LS-L there, you'll see a whole bunch of complicated stuff that you may never have seen before if you're used to using just the Finder to browse around your Mac. We also can use things like CD and the tilde. And pressing return on that in PWD will show you that we're back to users admin. So tilde means your home folder. It's a shorthand way of saying home folder and not having to say your particular home folder over and over again. So I'm gonna clear the screen again. That's a little bit about how to move around the file system. We can also use commands to manipulate files and folders, and one of those is going to be the mkdir command. Now I'm gonna change directory back into my desktop, and then I'm gonna make a directory using mkdir, and I'll just call it my folder. Then I'm gonna change directory into my folder, and there is nothing in here right now. ls-l will show that but we can create a few empty files with a command called touch. Now touch will just update an existing file's modification date or last access date, but used in this case, it's going to create some empty files for me. And I can put several file names on the command line all at once, as long as I separate them with spaces. ls-l shows me the files in my folder there, and they all are zero bytes in size. There's nothing in these files yet. Now this brings me to one of the big advantages of the command line. You can see inside of common configuration files, and we're going to just use file one, two, and three here as stand-ins for configuration files for the time being. And you can use these command line tools to see things that you don't normally see through the finder and also to examine and even edit configuration files as necessary. So we need to put something into file one, and if you'll remember back to the man command, we can use it to find a useful command for filling up our files with some random information. So I'm gonna type man jot, 
paging through it, there are some examples of how to use the jot command down here at the bottom of the man page. I'm going to take this one that just has an example for creating a whole bunch of eight letter strings. I'm going to use command C. So I'm kind of mixing the command line with my graphical user interface. Type a Q to get out of the man page. Clear my screen and I'll just command V to paste it in. That's the sort of example that I'm going to fill my file one, two, and three up with. And how am I going to do that? Up arrow once to get that command back. And I'm going to add one thing onto the end. This is the greater than symbol, which is going to redirect all that output. And I'm going to just put it into file one. Now this is going to replace the contents of file one, but there was nothing in it anyway, so I'm not really concerned about it. And I can up arrow once again, use the delete key to back up and destroy that one character and replace it with a two character. And now I've got some other random information in file two. And of course, we're going to do this for file three. So now I've got some random information. And just in case you ever need this, the jot command is great for making short eight character random passwords for your users. Now, how am I going to use these random files in order to demonstrate how to see the contents of configuration files? Well, I'm going to teach you three commands. First one up is cat. Cat by itself just says, take the contents of the file and spit it out here in the terminal window. So cat file one will list out the contents of file one. I can do the same thing for file two, but instead let's do the less command for file two. And you'll notice this is sort of like when we were looking at the man pages. It is a interface where I can kind of move up and down with the arrow keys. Of course, I don't have enough lines to fill up the screen. And when I'm done, I press the Q to quit out of that interface. And then we also have something called nano. Now, I know some of you out there are probably experienced command line enthusiasts who are used to using Vim or VI, and that is just fine. If you know other command line tools for editing, go ahead and use them. But if you're just starting out, nano is fairly simple to use. So we're gonna say nano file three, and you can see we're in a simple editor. If I use the down arrow, it'll move my cursor down. If I press return, it just inserts some lines. I can go back up with the arrow key. I can put in a new sentence and control X will write it out with the answer of Y and press return and we're out of there. So nano is nice because it gives you all that little help down at the bottom of the window to remind you what the key commands are. Now there are some other Apple specific tools that you may end up using for managing your server. There is something called system profiler. If you press return and just type out system profiler, it will do essentially the same as going to system information and getting a full report. And it may take a while depending upon the size of your computer, how many applications are installed and so forth. Now we could always redirect that to a file and save it off for ourselves. There's other Apple specific things like DiskUtil. And just by itself doesn't work, doesn't really give you anything other than this help message. And we can always scroll back a little bit and see that the very first part of DiskUtil is list. So we'll try that. I'll up arrow once and type in list after DiskUtil. And we can see a list of our hard drives. Another common Apple command is open. This is just like double clicking or using command O on a file. And I want to open the current folder that I'm in, my folder. And there's a little trick. I can use the period by itself, much like we use the period period to change directory up one level. A period by itself says just operate on this current directory. So I want to open the current directory. I'll press return and it will switch over to the finder and open up my folder in a finder window. And this brings me to my last little bit of demonstration here. The finder and the terminal are somewhat integrated. Let me switch back to my terminal get it back to a non full screen view so that I can do this and I'll shrink it down a little bit, clear it so that it's easier to see. And if I wanted to, I could do something like cat a file as I did before. But if I don't want to type out the name for some reason, I can drag and drop a file in and it will perfectly type out the path to that file for me. 
and operate just the way you would expect it to. So those are basic commands that you will use during this course. There are many, many command line tutorials available, and Mac OS X is based on BSD Unix. So if you find a tutorial that is about the command line for BSD Unix, it will probably be applicable for Mac OS X.